Maria Maria, and I am the archivist of the National War Museum. The archivist takes care of archives. Archives are a collection of material usually related to a certain topic or period in time, and it includes documents, photographs, diaries and memorabilia. Today, together with my colleague Vanessa Chantar and British Air Force pilot Stanley, we will be taking a look at how Christmas was celebrated in wartime Malta. As you may be aware, World War II broke out in 1939. On one side we have Nazi Germany and on the other side we have Great Britain. Although Malta was a British colony, it did not start to feel the effects of World War II until June 1940, when the Italian fascist leader Mussolini declared war on Great Britain. Bombing started soon after, as Malta was considered a strategic location which held the key to the control of the Mediterranean. Although in 1940, only the Italian Air Force was attacking Malta, Harch penned ferment that the islanders had to adapt to a changing situation. Curfew and light after dark constructions were issued. Curfew is when you are not allowed to go out after a certain time. Thankfully, no bombings were carried out in Christmas 1940. Midnight Mass was celebrated at 4 p.m. and people remained positive even though they were asked to stay home as much as possible. Food restrictions and rationing were still not in place and Christmas, although quieter, was still celebrated. An interesting tidbit on what was eaten for Christmas lunch in 1940 by a Maltese family can be taken from the book Malta Teenager at War. It seems that tempana with corned beef, wine from in jar and trifle was on the menu. For high tea they ate sandwiches, meringue and trifle. The officers' Christmas lunches were much richer. As you can see, there was a choice of meat, alcohol and dessert. The German Air Force, the Luftwaffe, was transferred to Sicily in order to give a helping hand to the Italian Air Force, the Regia Aeronautica, in January 1941. The situation in Malta was going to go from bad to much, much worse. The bombings increased significantly when the famous aircraft carrier Illustrious left Egypt in order to escort a convoy. A convoy is a group of ships which travel together for safety. The illustrious was berthed alongside Senglea and during the 13 days, when it was in Malta, the Luftwaffe managed to destroy two-thirds of the city. Malta did not surrender and in fact the illustrious managed to slip away from the Germans. The Germans continued bombing Malta until May 1941, when they were transferred back to the Russian front. The enemy tried to cut off supplies from Malta, but some British convoys still managed to get through. In fact, the British were even managing to sink some of the Axis ships, which were on their way to North Africa in order to supply German commander Roman's troops. This continued until the Germans returned to the Mediterranean and once again tried to bomb Malta into defeat. By 1941, the Maltese were increasingly feeling the pinch caused by the lack of supplies getting through due to the airborne blockade. 
Thus, 1941 saw a system of rationing for matches, soap, coffee and sugar being introduced. Milk was only given to children of two years of age and invalids. The list grew longer as the year went by. The usual regulations of curfew and lights after dark were still being observed. As you can imagine, Christmas of 1941 was a very quiet and scary affair, with numerous air raids taking place during the day and during the night. In fact, Upper Baraka was badly damaged during an air raid which happened on Christmas Eve. Luckily, this did not dampen everyone's spirits, and in fact some shelters were even adorned with Christmas paper decoration. Although food restrictions were still in place, various people gave from the little they had, and cake was baked, made from lard, flour and orange peel. For many children, this was their first taste of this dessert. Christmas Day for the officers was a different affair altogether, with a fancy dress football match held at Ta'ali and lunch, consisting of a five-course meal, including meat, cheese, biscuits, alcohol and sweets. Regent Cinema in Valletta was also open for business during Christmas, with the black and white movie Arise My Love being projected. The cinema will be badly hit during an air raid the following year. By 1942, the Maltese did not know what to expect, and the situation seemed pretty bad. Oh boy, I'm glad this year is almost over. The German forces have been hammering us non-stop, killing many people and even destroying many Maltese houses and even Maltese landmarks. Here, let me show you a few photos taken by some of my friends. The Royal Opera House, the Law Courts, the Auberges of France and Italy, the Cathedral, the Palace in Valletta, even the Mosta Dome. These are but a few of the locations which have been hit by enemy bombs. Because we have survived all this and more, we have been awarded the George Cross, a medal given for bravery. Congratulations have been sent from abroad. Due to heavy bombings, the ceremony would not be held until September. The George Cross was brought over by a new governor, Lord Gort, a World War I veteran who was also in charge of the evacuation of Dunkirk in 1940. He's certainly the good man you want at the top during a strategic situation. When he arrived in Malta, he definitely had to prove his worth. The past few months have seen the islands being brought to their knees. At one point, there was even talk of a date for surrender. Luckily, a convoy had managed to get through in August. The situation is slightly better, but we still have a long way to go. The ordeal is far from over. I wonder when I'll see my loved ones back home again. I sent letters, but I have no guarantee that they'll get to their destination. Royal Navy ships in the Mediterranean are still in great danger of being sunk. Men and supplies going down with these vessels, as well as our letters. Our main concern last year was how to celebrate without our usual Christmas feasting. Thankfully, us pilots were still given our usual Christmas lunch. Us pilots tend to be very popular with the ladies. Must be our dashing uniforms. And although my mates happened to be on standby that night, I was off duty. 
and I was able to manage a few drinks or two extra. <laughs> mm. I had also managed to nab tickets to the pantomime put up by Christina Radcliffe and her group. And although our celebrations were rather quiet, we still managed to have a pretty good Christmas after all. I remember an alert was sounded at 7.30 in the evening and we had to finish our meal in the shelter. But still a very merry time was had by most of us. The locals had it much harder than us. They had to face through shortages of key ingredients. Potatoes, flour, eggs. That didn't put them off though. They managed to improvise. They used dried egg, powdered milk, basically whatever they can put their hands on. Rations had been tightened up in December, and even tomato paste became a ration commodity. Every family had to register with a single bread seller to make sure that it was distributed as fairly as possible. Some potatoes from Cyprus had also been received and the authorities were hoping that once planted it would help the increasingly desperate food situation. Back to this year. The subject of this year's pantomime was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. What a show! I had a big many laugh and also it helped to put me in my Christmas spirit. I need to laugh after this terrible year. Apart from fearing for my death, I was also very hungry. Things got a bit easier when a convoy managed to make it through in August. Two other convoys also managed to arrive within a fortnight of each other, November and December. The ration measures did not really increase though. For Christmas, the locals were granted an extra ration of beans and candles as a kind of Christmas gift. This year's Christmas dinner was not very different to last year's. We were hoping for a real slap-up dinner this year. Unfortunately, we were not quite sure what meat was served as a main course. <laughs> I've just finished with my cheese and biscuits. After this, I'll go have a drink or five with the lads and by 1am I'll be in bed before the siren warning us to switch off all the lights sounds. Now before I leave, I would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and hopefully you'll never have to live through what we went through. Thank you, Officer Stanley, for your timely intervention. December 1941 and January 1942 were very tough months for the Maltese Islands. Around 132 air raids were sounded. This number would go up to 3,000 by the end of the year. The peak of the attacks happened in April, with more than 282 air raids being suffered. From 1943 onwards, Malta seems to have fallen out of the radar of the Axis. In fact, January 1943 only saw the sounding of the alarm 25 times, a far cry from that of the previous year. This turn of the events was due to the fact that the Germans were suffering other important dif difficulties on other more important and far away from Malta war fronts. In fact, in February, after their failure to capture Stalingrad, they were forced to abandon Russia. Closer to home, the Allies were winning on the Northern African Front. After the Axis abandoned this continent, the British and the Americans could now concentrate on the takeover of Italy through Sicily. The invasion of Sicily from Malta was launched in July and it proved to be a great success. Malta played a very important role in this takeover. Indeed, a large number of troops and equipment started coming over. The number of aircraft that was to fly from Malta to Sicily was so large that a number of airstrips had in fact to be constructed. 
finally, the island which had suffered so much due to its geographical location next to the enemy was seeing the tables turned. The Maltese celebrated when they heard of Mussolini's downfall later that same month. Even greater celebrations were to follow when the Italian Navy brought its fleet to Malta after having signed a secret agreement with the Allies. The day happened to be the 8th of September, a day which the Maltese had already celebrated as it happened to be the date the Ottoman Turks, back in 1565, had been defeated. The celebrations in Valletta were a sight to behold. 1943 also saw the arrival in Malta of many important politicians. In June, the British King George VI visited Malta to see the devastation suffered by the island and its people. US President Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Churchill followed in November and December. Both leaders congratulated the Maltese on their bravery and recognized the important role played by Malta. In Europe, World War II ended on the 8th of May 1945. Later on, during that same year, World War II officially ended for everyone with the surrender of the Japanese on the 15th of August. By the end of 1943, the general feeling was that Malta's role in the war was over. Christmas 1943 was one where celebrations were much more happy and relaxed. However, the festivities were still poor because food was still being rationed and supplies were also limited. Thinking back to as what people who must have lived during World War II times must have felt during those times, we can perhaps find some similarities to our current situation, the COVID-19 pandemic. During those times, people had to limit social gatherings, had to, could not go to bars, entertainment areas were closed, they had to follow a curfew. Similarly to us, perhaps this Christmas won't be the most joyful of one. We have social distancing rules to follow. However, history has a way of reminding us that man has been through many difficult times. And yet, thankfully, these difficult times have gone by and good times have come back again. While thanking you for joining us on this brief historical journey through time from Fort St. Elmo, myself, Maria and Captain Stanley would like to wish you a very happy Christmas and hopefully a better New Year.